Hi there, welcome to Teamsy channel. On this lecture, we'll be talking about obesity, which was one of the major problems facing the society. In this lecture, we are going to understand the definition and causes of obesity, physiological role of leptin, and how it affects the body weight, complications, and treatment of obesity. Obesity can be defined as excessive accumulation of fatty tissue that affects the normal functioning of human body. Here are the three main causes for obesity. Lack of physical exercise, bad nutritional habits, and genetics. I know you see that the correlation between obesity and these causes seems to be unclear. However, when we think about it using the following rule, it will be okay with you. The main point to focus on when thinking about obesity are fat stores. Fats are important energy sources for our body. Fat from food is broken down into fatty acids which can travel in the blood to be captured by hungry cells. Fatty acids that are not needed right away are packed in bundles called triglycerides and stored in fat cells. These fats are stored to be reused when needed. In other words, when our cells require to generate energy or ATP. Not just fats are energy sources. Carbohydrates, proteins are also energy sources. However, we are good in storing fats. So most of the energy sources are converted to fatty acids to be stored as tags in the fatty tissue. So, food ingested is a form of energy intake. As the energy intake increases, fat stores increases. Energy expenditure can be through physical exercise, by lysis or breakdown of tags into fatty acids that would be used to generate ATP that is used in energy requiring processes, for example, contraction and relaxation of skeletal muscles during running, for example. This is a form of energy expenditure. So the more the energy expanded, the less fat stores are there. If I do leg physical exercise, this means that my energy intake is fine. However, my energy expenditure is too low. So I'm just storing the energy I'm getting in form of fats and not burning any of it. Of course I'll get obese due to fat accumulation. Bad nutritional habits. In this case my energy expenditure is fine. However, I do have a great energy intake. Actually, which is useless. I do not need all this energy. Genetics. Genes do affect every single protein in our body. Without genes, no proteins would exist. Translation and transcription of the gene would lead to a well-functioning protein. If these genes are mutated, other weed forms of proteins will be produced and of course this would affect our metabolic reactions. And of course, you can think about it. Genes would lead to the existence of proteins that are involved in regulation of fat stores. If these genes are mutated, Regulating fat stores would be difficult. However, before going through other causes of for obesity, we need to know how common is that. Unfortunately, obesity is very common. Globally, it is estimated that 170 million children who are the under age of 18 are estimated to be overweight. Almost one third of the children and adolescents in the United States are either 
overweight or obese and the numbers are being traveled from the late 70s until 2000. Of course, this sounds terrifying. Obesity is caused by ingesting more energy expanded over a long period of time, which means long-term positive energy balance. What does a positive energy and a negative energy balance mean? You know that energy is stored in our body as fats. So the more fat stores I have, the more energy I do have. So here is a positive energy stores or positive energy balance. If I do have more energy intake than expenditure, so I'm going to have more fat stores. This means I have more energy. So fats are accumulated in my body. This would increase my weight. And of course, I'll get obese later on. Otherwise, it must be long term. So if I do have positive energy balance, uh, within a week, I'll not get obese. But positive energy balance, for example, for 20 years, of course, I'm going to be obese, I'm going to die. Negative energy balance is the opposite of this. I'm not having enough energy. However, I'm doing a lot of work. I'm doing a great energy expenditure and so I'm depleting my fat stores without renewing it. So there are less accumulation of fats and so this is a negative energy balance resulting in weight loss and of course not getting obese. Physical inactivity, as we said, is a very, very common cause for obesity. Active people do burn more calories than sedentary people. As we said, we do need energy for contraction and relaxation for our skeletal muscle. The more we work, the more calories we turn. Overeating, of course, leads to energy, positive energy balance and weight gain. And of course, leads to obesity with time. Especially if our diet is high in fats or carbohydrates. Why carbohydrates lead to weight gain? This will be discussed later on during the lecture, don't worry. Genes. There are some people who are more susceptible to develop obesity than others, especially if one or both of their parents are obese. Genes affect hormones involved in fat regulation, as we said. Let's have an example for this. Leptin deficiency. What is leptin? Leptin is a peptide hormone. Hormone or peptide hormone means protein that is controlled by genes. Leptin have a function or has a function that which is controlling our body weight. This occurs via signaling the brain to eat less or more according to body fat stores. If we do have a lot of fat stores, leptin is going to tell our brain now you need to eat less. If I do have very low stores leptin is going to tell my brain no 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 eat more we are going to die we have no energy okay here is the principle of how leptin works so now just imagine if your body cannot produce enough leptin so or leptin cannot signal the brain which means leptin is there in the blood but cannot reach the brain, however the cause, or whatever the cause, we are going to discuss this later. So, no one is going to tell the brain to eat less, and 
I'm keeping on. I'm eating them um, with no stop. So the control is lost. And of course, there is positive energy balance. I'm getting to be obese. And this was an example for how genes affect obesity. Other causes of obesity involve the diet high in simple carbohydrates, frequency of eating and medications. The role of carbohydrates and weight gain is not clear, however we do know that carbohydrates increase the blood glucose levels which in turn stimulate our pancreas to release insulin. Insulin is a hormone that affects blood glucose levels. However, it also affects fatty acid concentrations within the plasma and so it do promote the growth of fatty tissue. Through the inhibition of lipolysis and stimulation of lipogenesis. So insulin seeks for trapped fats within the cells. This occurs due to the dephosphorylation that occurs within the cell or fat cells when insulin is attached to the receptors. In the presence of insulin, Two hormones are dephosphorylated, hormone sensitive lipase and ECC which is acetyl CoA carboxylase. The first one which is hormone sensitive lipase is an enzyme that becomes inactive when dephosphorylated and so in the presence of high plasma levels of insulin and glucose this enzyme is dephosphorylated and inactive and this means that lipolysis is inhibited because hormone sensitive lipase is a very important enzyme that is involved in the lipolysis process. On the other hand, insulin stimulates the process of fatty acid tissue formation or known as lipogenesis. This occurs through the management of ACC or acetyl-CoA carboxylase enzyme which catalyzes the carboxylation of acetyl-CoA to form manolyl-CoA and so when this enzyme is dephosphorylated it becomes active and the lipogenesis process progress and so more fats are stored. I hope this helped you to understand how simple carbohydrates leads to growth of fats and finally leads to opacity. Frequency of eating The relationship between frequency of eating or how often you eat and weight is somewhat controversial or mean there are still discussions around this point. One of the possible explanations is that small frequent meals produce a staple insulin levels since I'm taking a meal of course after a meal my insulin level increases, however if it is a small meal I need a small amount of insulin and so I'm trying to avoid large spikes of insulin which occurs after large meals. Medications some medications are associated with weight gain. For example, oral contraceptives. Oral contraceptives 
affects estrogen and progesterone level. Remember that estrogens and progesterone levels are very important in regulation of leptin levels within the blood and leptin is a very important hormone that affects the fat stores. Diabetic medications are important because they do affect the insulin levels and of course insulin do affect the growth of fatty tissue. There are other types of medications that need lead to obesity, however you do not need to know much details, just know what type of medications lead to obesity. Okay, now let's see where my excessive fat goes. Does it go anywhere in my body or it seems that there are certain positions or certain places within my body where fat accumulates. Okay, in general, women collect fat in the hips and buttocks, giving them a pea-shaped appearance. They look like a pea. On the other hand, men look like an apple because that fats accumulate around their pili, giving them apple shape. Apple shape is unfortunately unhealthy because the fats are being concentrated mostly near or within the abdomen and affecting the vital organs and more likely to develop many of health problems associated with obesity. And this means that it's better of course to have a pea shaped body than an apple shaped body. Some would wonder why do females would have a pea-shaped and poor men are going to have an apple-shaped body. Estrogen and progesterone promotes the growth of fat tissue. Most commonly, we find that more women are looks overweight than men because of two of these hormones. So it's more likely for fats to accumulate within a female body than male body and having a pea-shaped distribution for fat gives the female a higher survivance so that she would not be at high risk of health problems. However, the men do not have the same problem with their sex hormones which do not um, promote the growth of fat tissue so that they will not be affected or they are not be under risk unless they have an unhealthy lifestyle. And so this type of fat distribution within the body seeks for survival. Okay, how to know whether I am more nearly to be a pear shaped or I'm most likely to be an apple shaped? There are some tools or simple ways to determine whether a person or someone is an apple or pear shape. Here are three ways. Waist to hip ratio, and here we are going to measure the waist and measure the hip. Waist at the narrowest point, hip at the widest point, and find the ratio. Another one, or another way, we are going to find the weight circumference. And the 
final way is BMI, we are going to talk about it. Waist circumference is measured at the level of the earlier crest. Above 102 cm for men means you are obese. Above 88 cm for women you are obese. And a waist to hip ratio more than one means obesity for men and 0.85 for women means obesity. PMI body mass index. This would help us to measure the human body shape based according to his mass and height. So, for example, if I am 60 kilos, so I'm both the 60s there in the numerator, and if I am 150 centimeters, so I'm going to convert it to meters, so 1.5 power 2 and get you a result. The analysis is going to be by comparison of your result to the results found in the table. If you did found that you are overweight or obese, I know most of you are going to try it. Um, seek for medical advice and don't try to start a keto diet, for example, without asking your doctor. Adipose tissue. Adipose tissue is an endocrine organ since it pro do produce hormones and there are two types of Adipose tissue, white and brown. White is responsible for storing the energy or storing the fats, while brown provide the heat, the body heat. So they use the fats to generate heat so that I'm kept warm. Leptin or starvation hormone. Leptin is a peptide hormone or a protein hormone. That is encoded by OBD as any protein it must have an uh, encoding gene. Uh, this gene is mainly expressed inside the adipose tissue, however it can be expressed in other tissues, tissues inside the brain, gastric and mammary epithelium, skeletal muscle or placenta. All these can express that gene, however mainly adipose tissue lead to the production of leptin. Leptin is a hormone, as we said, released from fat cells located inside the adipose tissue, and when it reaches the blood, it can travel to reach the brain, mainly hypothalamus, so that it sends signals to the hypothalamus through um, getting attached to the receptors inside the hypothalamus for leptin, and so that it helps to regulate and alter long-term food intake and energy expenditure, not just from one meal to the next. And so that it helps to maintain the body weight. Of course, leptin concentrations increase us as fats increase us and so it is dependent on the amount of energy stored and the status of energy balance as we said before. So that more leptin levels are there in obese individuals than lean individuals or thin individuals. Of course this seems to be logic since Leptin comes from fat cells, so they are 
directly connected to individual's amount of body fat and if the individuals add body fat leptin levels will increase if individual lowers body fat percentages leptin will decrease as well of course there are other factors than the amount of energy uh, or amount of fat stores regulate leptin release this include insulin leptin increases in response to feeding or insulin because insulin is one of the hormones pro that promotes fatty tissue growth and of course as the fatty tissue increases leptin levels increases there are other factors affecting leptin for example transcription factors found inside the promoter of the op gene and there are other factors that decrease have leptin which are found here by the pink color for example cold exposure if i'm feeling cold so i need to generate heat via brown adipose tissue and so i'm going to use some of my stoves and so the fat stoves are decreased and so less leptin is produced smoking also decreases leptin however the mechanism is not really important now we are going to go through it later but not in this lecture adrenergic stimulation or um, adrenaline is found to decrease leptin since adrenaline has a catabolic um, effects it leads to lipolysis or use of carbohydrates use of fats in order to get energy to do work so this depleted the stores and so less leptin is produced a very important point is that females do have higher leptin levels than males as we said that female hormones such as estrogen promote the growth of fatty tissue and of course this stimulate the production of leptin however androgens in males lead to inhibition of leptin production i uh, remember i told you that leptin is attached to the receptors found inside the hypothalamus these receptors are encoded by db gene anti-obesity hormone or starvation hormone as we said how do leptin decreases the body weight okay leptin do its function through inhibition of intracellular lipid concentration since it tells the body or it tells the brain to eat less so this gives us a chance to use the stored fats instead of getting more fats so this decreases the intracellular lipid concentration it also activates amp activated protein kinase this means that we are going to increase lipolysis and decrease lipogenesis i don't want to form tags i need to get rid of them through fatty acid oxidation and so leptin increases the fatty acid oxidation and reduce the fat tissue inside muscles and liver it increases the insulin sensitivity which means that it makes the cells or tissues to respond much better to insulin and we are going to cover this point later 
thermogenesis then since leptin stimulate the body to get rid of fats through generation of heat reproductive function to use fats for steroid hormones and so on these are other functions of leptin however the first function is the most important in this lecture this is what we said before um, when leptin reaches hypothalamus the hypothalamus is going to detect whether there are low leptin levels or high leptin levels if high, low leptin levels are detected the body is warmed off limited energy sources or supplies so that we are going to eat more on the other hand if high leptin levels are detected the hypothalamus senses that the body is being overweight and so i need to eat less and expend more energy and here is a problem that faces most of us leptin resistance What is leptin resistance? Leptin is being produced in my body or the leptin function is not done. For example, the fatty tissue already produced the leptin, leptin reached the blood, traveled and reached the brain and tried to get attached to their receptors however they couldn't because of a mutation for the gene for these receptors and so now they cannot get in contact with the brain and so the brain cannot detect the level of leptin and so that I'm resistant to do this leptin I'm keeping eating and I cannot feel that my fat stores I are increased incredibly. Oh, there are post receptor abnormalities, which means that the leptin is able to get attached to the receptor. However, there is a problem in the signal transduction within the brain cells so that the process is not completed. Oh, the leptin actually cannot find the brain or cannot reach the brain because they cannot cross the brain brain problem barrier oh we are producing other form of leptin we are not producing the correct hormone we are producing any other non-functioning protein because there is a mutation in ob gene which is found in the human fat cells As high as leptin increases or blood concentration of leptin increases, this means that leptin resistance increases. So, to summarize, people who are obese have high levels of leptin, but leptin signal is not working due to a condition known as leptin resistance. Leptin resistance can cause hunger since I cannot feel that my fat stores are um, more than enough. And so there are reduced number of calories you burn. Another important hormone is adiponectin is a protein hormone secreted from adipose tissue and it is an insulin sensitizing hormone so that it works to lower your blood glucose by increasing the muscle fat and liver sensitivity to insulin so that they uptake more glucose from the blood the receptors are known as adipo RN and adipo R2. Um, 
A demonic teen have eight isoforms, by the way. And very important point that both the transitional modification of this hormone is necessary for their optimal biological activity. A demonic teen is involved in regulation of glucose levels and fatty acid breakdown. They have some anti-inflammatory roles. Unlike leptin, this hormone negatively correlates with obesity. So low levels of adiponectin are found in people who are obese. Um, negatively correlates with fasting, with type 2 diabetes, with plasma triglycerides, and positively correlates with type 1 diabetes and anorexia nervosa. Anorexia is a type or is a disease um, mainly because with females so that they hate to eat or they are afraid to eat because they don't want to get fat. Adiponectin increases fatty acid oxidation and so lower the circulating free fatty acids and prevents insulin resistance. It inhibits macrophage activation and foam cell accumulation so it protects the vasculature by reducing platelet aggregation and vasodilatation and this is the explanation for anti-inflammatory rules for the adibunectin. There are other regulatory factor factors determining whether we should eat more or less. They include brain neurotransmitters, gut hormones and other hormones. Um, here are two examples. CCK is one of the gut hormones. Uh, at brain level, it inhibits food intake and it stimulates pancreatic enzymes. Um, CCK is produced after meals so that it tells the brain, okay, we have enough food, now we have to digest it using pancreatic enzymes and inhibit more food intake. Uh, unlike ghrelin, which is produced inside the stomach, it detects empty stomach and so stimulate hunger. Of course, it's one of the gut hormones. Leptin and ghrelin. Before eating or before the meal, I have empty stomach or receptors inside the stomach detects this hungry person or states of hunger so it produces ghrelin so that the ghrelin amount is more than the leptin and I do have low adipose tissue so it detects where I'm going to eat more so that stomach starts to produce less ghrelin however I'm getting more fats and adipose tissue growth, so leptin increases to tell the brain to stop eating. This is uh, seems to be negative feedback cycle. Um, the red color means inhibitory, the green color means st stimulatory. Ghrelin stimulates the appetite. Leptin decreases the appetite. Both leptin and insulin mean that there is enough glucose, enough fats, so we are going to inhibit any increase in appetite. 